Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the learning of Teres Hashem, Be'ezras Hashem Yisbar. Uh, we uh, always start off with appreciation to TorahAnytime.com for giving us this amazing platform to teach Kaira all over the world, to Kalaloshin for its global network, to uh, Torah Communications Network that carries our shiurim, uh, and uh, to our Zoom family, to those that are here in our flagship uh, station at the Agudis Yisrael Bezev of Fairways Lakewood, and to uh, those that are listening to us on YouTube, viewing us on YouTube, on Facebook, and the, all the other places that carry this shir. Tonight we have two special sponsors. We're sponsored by Binyamin Rivlin and his mother, Mrs. Devorah Rivlin, in the merit of the fallen soldiers, Zechron on Mavracha, Schusam Yagen Aleinu, and the Schus of the safe return of the hostages, and the safety of our brave soldiers, and all of Klal Yisrael. The Shir is also sponsored, I have a Talmida who likes to remain anonymous, but she has a beautiful practice of sponsoring the last share of the year and the first share of the year. As this is the last share of Tashim Pei Dalid. Uh, she's sponsoring the share. And as this is the last Chumash year of Tashim Pei Dalid, I want to thank the Rabbi Nishalaylam that he gives me the opportunity to teach Tyra to all of you every week for decades, Baruch Hashem, and I pray that Hashem should give me the opportunity to do so with all of you till the coming of Mashiach speedily in our day. Uh, then afterwards, we'll see. Maybe I'll give Shir on Tuesday nights, we'll see. Um, We know that in our slichas, this Matzoi Shabbos, when we start to say slichas, to ask Hashem for forgiveness, so the uh, special pizmain that everybody says uh, after the chazan, stanza by stanza, is lishmoa el arina ve'el atfila. Lishmoa el arina v'yel that Hashem, we ask, He should hear our song and our petition. It's very important as the year comes to a close that first we should express our song. And that is, it's an opportunity at the end of the year to look back and to be appreciative. So that at the end of the year, I am appreciative for decades. There are wonderful people who subscribe to my tapes and afterwards to my CDs and now to my emails. And I thank them for their support. As this year, uh, is made possibly greatly by our sponsors. I want to spo thank our sponsors that sponsored the year throughout the year. And uh, Hashem should grant you special blessing for that. <coughs> Again, I want to thank the platforms Torah Anytime, Kol Aloshin, I want to thank my mother, Zolzan Gesund, and my father, Olav Shalom, Saba, for raising me, my mother and father, all of it, my mother, Zolzan Gesund, my father for raising me and enabling me to grow up in an environment of Tyra. I want to think, thank my Rebbeim, and when I think about my Hashkafas, I want to thank especially uh, Ramosha 
and Rav Avigdor Miller that formed much of my hashkafa. Uh, and I want to thank finally all my listeners and viewers for making this year possible and the success that it is. The Pasuk says, Ki sashuv el Hashem alikecha b'chol levavacha u b'chol nafshecha. When you return to Hashem, your God, with all your heart and all your soul. And we know that the commentators, Rabbi Yaina, the master of tshuva, his Sefer Shari Tshuva, is basically the uh, handbook of tshuva. He says there's many levels of tshuva. And we know that in our davening, when we say the bracha of tshuva, so we ask Hashem, that He should return us with the perfect tshuva before you. Now we know, as I explained, that we can't ask Hashem to return us with tshuva. Because the first step has to come from us. So we're not going to say that Hashem do the tshuva for us. First we have to take the first step. Like it says, if you pischuli pesach shomachat, if you'll open an opening even as an eye of a needle, then then I'll open a door wide as a, the, the entrance to the palace. We have to, we could only ask Hashem after we start that He should help us make a complete tshuva. But what does a complete tshuva mean? Now we know that the Rambam says that a complete tshuva is that yoid olov yoidea talumois, that the one who knows the secrets could testify that we've done so well that we'll never return to the crime. Right, uh, however, Rav Chatzka Labramsky gives us a very, very um, profound way to look at tshuva. Rav Katzka Labramsi says that regular tshuva, which we know, contains the steps of charata l'sha'avar, regret for the past, the kabbalah al-asid, acceptance for the future. It contains the all-important step of aziva sachet, that means forsaking the sin. And as Rabbi Yoyna said, we learned it recently in the Chak, in Parshas Mitzayra. Rabbi Yoyna says that if a person regrets his sin, but doesn't let go of the sin, here's a person, he regrets, he feels bad that he yells at his wife. But he continues to yell at his wife. So he says, that's like somebody who is toivel v'sheretz biyadai. It's like somebody who immerses, but he still has the tummy dicker reptile in his hand. Going in the mik mikvah, holding a dead lizard is not going to purify him. So of course, tshuva doesn't help without aziva sachet. So you need charata l'sha'avar. You need to regret what you did in the past. You need to forsake the sin. You need a kabbalah ala osid. In the future, you're not going to repeat it. And you need to have vidui, verbal confession. 
that's a regular tshuva. Says Rab Chatzka Labramsky, tshuva shleima, a complete tshuva, a perfect tshuva, is another step. What's that step? He says, the Pasuk says, Yazoiv Rosha Darkai. A wicked person should forsake his sin. Excuse me, he should forsake his way. It doesn't say he should forsake just the sin. He should forsake the path that leads him to that sin. In other words, the person has to do a investigation. What leads me to this sin? And erase that, erase that root, that cause. That's a tshuva shleim. So let me give you some examples. So this is not just theoretics. And you say, what's Rabbi Weiss talking about? So I'll take a simple example. Recently we said in the shir how important it is to say Ani the first thing we say in the morning. In other words, before we turn to our spouse or our brother or sister that's in the bedroom with us, if we're children, uh, before we turn to them and say, how does the weather look outside? Or what do you think we're going to do today? Or even did you sleep well? The first thing that should come out of our mouth is moda ani lefanecha. We thank you, Hashem. Melachai v'kayom. Right? Shechazar to be nishmasi. You return me my life. Bechemla with compassion, even though I might not deserve it. Rabbi Amunasecha, and you, your trust is so great that I wasn't even worried about it. Now let's say you, uh, you don't start your day that way. You forget it. Many mornings you forget to do that. You turn to your wife and say, you know what's the plans for today? You turn to your husband and say, uh, could you pick up something from the cleaners for me? So a regular tshuva is to regret not opening your day like a Jew, like a good Jew. And you make a commitment to be more mindful and try better. That's a regular tshuva. Reb Chatzka says a tshuva shlema is to ask yourself, why am I forgetting to say Maidani? And to diagnose, you know why I'm forgetting to say Maidani? Because I'm not thinking about Hashem enough. It's not by me the way of my life to Shivisi Hashem Lunegdi Summit, that Hashem is before me often. The way of behold rochecha do eyu in all my ways, you should acknowledge him. When I'm waking up in the morning, uh, that God is not on my mind. In other words, the mission that it says about a tzaddik, when Chavakik distilled all 613, it says, He distilled the whole Torah to one concept. Tzaddik be'emunasa yichya. The tzaddik lives with his faith. We have a mitzvah sasei de'araisa of es Hashem alekecha tira. Which according to Rav Miller, this means and you should be seeing Hashem often. Now there a person says, you know, if I would think about Hashem more, I wouldn't be able to forget Moidani. So that's a tshuva shlema. Tshuva shlema looks at the root cause. Now that's a simple example. Let me give you another example. This is a serious business. A person in making a cheshben nefesh, and of course, 
if you didn't make a cheshben anefesh yet, it's high time to make a cheshben anefesh. A person has to make a personal accounting. There's no way that you come to Rosh Hashanah without a personal accounting. And in his cheshben anefesh, he realizes that he's very, very poor, or she's very poor, at giving attention to a parent. You don't visit enough. You don't call enough. You don't give enough nachas. You're supposed to give a parent nachas. So regular tshuva would be to say, I'm going to do better. I'm not going to be derelict in my responsibilities. And I'm going to make up a time to call. I'm going to make up a time to visit. I'm going to think of ways to give nachas, to give pleasure. But that's not a tshuva shleim. Using the forensic activity of Rav Chatzkel Abramsky, a person asks, why am I neglecting this all-important responsibility? Ah, it's because I'm lacking in our HaTayv. I'm lacking in gratitude. I don't think about the fact that I exist only because of my parents. I don't think about all they did for me when I was helpless in my youth. By working on the root cause, that's a tshuva shleim. Let's take another example. Take another example. There's a tenth commandment. Kibbut Abayim is the fifth commandment. There's a tenth commandment. The Tenth Commandment is loy sachmoid, or loy sisave. It depends whether it's the luchas rishonis or luchas shnias. Loy sachmoid, you shouldn't covet what is not yours. You shouldn't desire what is not yours. You shouldn't desire the fancy big house of your friend. You shouldn't desire the spouse of your friend. You shouldn't desire the job of your friend. Tyra says, Loi Sachmoid. Now, regular tshuva would be that you say that for the coming year, you will work on your jealous tendencies and you will try not to desire what's not yours. That's, that's a tshuva. You regret the Torah practice is mind control. Right? We, the Torah has demands on our mind when we put on our tefillin on our head. We are mishabed the thoughts of our head to Hashem. So the Torah practice is mind control. It says, You're not allowed to hate your friend in your heart. It says, You're not allowed to bear grudge. So it says that you're not allowed to desire. But if you want to do the tshuva shleima of Rav Chatzka Labramsky, then you say, why am I jealous? Because it's a chesorin in my belief of what I say every morning, she'osali kol tzarki, that Hashem makes for me everything I need. And that I'm lacking in the belief that the bigger house wouldn't be good for me. Perhaps if I had a bigger house, it would be too hard for my wife to clean and she would have a pressure and she would become a shrew and make my life miserable or get sick. Perhaps if I had a big swimming pool, God forbid a grandchild might dr drown. Perhaps if I had that promotion and the pressure of that bigger job, 
I would succumb to the temptations and end up in jail. Or have sleepless night because of worry. But I'll add to you even more. Here's a person, he's jealous of what the other person has, and he doesn't realize that the other person has that trip to Europe in first class in a six-star hotel, but it's deducting from his Eilam Abba. Hashem is giving him reward in this world and it's taking away from his Eilam Abba. You want that? Wouldn't it be foolish to be jealous of that? See, that's getting to the root. And by the way, when you get to the root and you take away the Seba, that which causes it is much more chance that a person would, will be able to do a lasting tshuva. Let, let's take another example. We know that it says in Shulchan Aruch that if you don't have kavana in the first bracha of Shemayin Esrei, in Mogen Avram, you have to say Shemayin Esrei over again. Just the Ramah, who we paskin like, and even the Svardim follow this Ramah, we don't say Shemayin Esrei over again because we probably won't have Kavana the second time either. So here's a person, he realizes that when he gets to Slach Lano, when he hits his chest, he says, I can't believe it. You mean I already did the first five brachas? <laughs> he gets to Slach Lano, he says, what happened to Mangan Avram? What happened to Machaya Mason? So to do tshuva, regular tshuva, means to accept upon oneself that one will pay more attention, maybe put his finger on the place, right? maybe be more rested, and try to be more meaningful. But if you want to do Reb Chatzkel Abramsky's tshuva and get to the root, why does it happen? Because the person is bereft of Dalif Naimi Ata Omeid. Know before whom you're standing. If a person really works on feeling that I'm standing in front of Hashem, that I take those three steps forward and I'm standing in front of my Creator, and when I'm bowing down, that's why we bow down to, to get, that's why we take the three steps forward. Because chitzayniyayis ma'ayrayis is apnimiyayis. Our outward activity helps to generate what's in our interior. And if a person really feels that one is standing before the melech malchi amlochim, the king who makes kings, so then a person won't be able to be distracted. So that's getting to the root. The same thing is true with, with the very unpleasant sin of talking in shul. A person should know that when making a cheshben and nefesh, if you talk in shul, that's really dangerous behavior. You have to remember that a crime that's done in the palace of the king is worse than a crime that's done outside in the street. To have the chutzpah, the sin in the palace of the king is much more serious. Shul is the palace of the king. That's the way it works. Shul is the palace of the king. That's what we say. It's our mikdash mat. That's why Sdaim was destroyed and nuked because it was in Eretz Yisrael. So, if a person talks in shuv and he wants to do tshuva, so regular tshuva is to realize that the Shulchan Aruch says that Godol Avoynoi Minasai, the sin of talking in shul, is a sin that's too heavy to bear. He says, you know what, I'm not going to do it anymore. And he even takes the step of changing his seat, not to be near those that talk. That's tshuva, and that's very praiseworthy. That's very admirable. But that's not the tshuva shlema 
that Rav Chatzkel is talking about. The Jewish layman that Rav Chatzkel is talking about is to say, why am I talking? I mean, if I was meeting somebody who's going to give me a possibility to make a lot of money, <laughs> I'm not going to be talking on the phone to my cousin. I'm not going to be chatting about the Mets or the Yankees' chances when this is going on. If I'm talking, it's because it's lacking by me the realization and the belief that my davening really makes a difference. Yeah, I got a daven. Yeah, I'm Jewish. That's what we do. We Jews, we go to shul and we daven. But if we believe that our davening makes a difference, and it does make a difference. In fact, the matter is we say it. Right? We say, Kikel Shemeat Filos Kopeh. And nobody is returned empty handed. A good prayer makes a difference in the quality of our life. But if we really believe that, not just intellectually, but we felt that we wouldn't be able to talk, we'd be crazy to talk. That's a Chuvish language. There's, there's so many examples of this, you know. The Torah gives a lav of loisa ameit says levavcha. You shouldn't harden your heart. And nothing titen. You should surely give. There are people that don't give tzedakah. They, they don't give. So to do tshuva would be to say, I'm going to do better this year. I'm going to take for my budgetary pie a nice portion for tzedakah. That's tshuva. That's a great thing. But a tshuva shalema is to say, why am I not giving? I don't really believe in what the Ramam tells us in Hilchah Tzedakah that ain't other ma'ani minat tzedakah. No one ever became poor from tzedakah. I don't believe really that Melech Mamon Chaser, Melech Salt was the, the olden day preservative. So the Gemara tells us Melech Mamon Chaser. The way to preserve your money is Chaser, is to be lacking some of it, to give away some of it. I don't feel, you see, David HaMelech said, Ani kirvas elikim li toiv. What's good for me? To be close to God. Ani kirvas elikim li toiv. Now, since there are two types of people, there are givers and there are takers. What's Hashem? Hashem can't be a taker because he's kainiakal. He owns everything. So Hashem is a giver. If I want to be like Hashem, I have to be a giver. A person feels this way and realizes that Olam Chesed Yibana. This world was built for kindness. Then that's doing the tshuva shleim. That's that's doing the whole whole tshuva. I I just want to explain to you that This is the way to diagnose every situation of tshuva. Anybody that makes a uh, realistic cheshben an nefesh takes a look if they're learning enough Torah. After all, Hashem says the default occupation of our life should be Torah learning. That's what it says. 
Lo yomish sefer atayra azeh mepicha vagisa ba yom and You should learn it day and night. Now, of course, we can't learn day and night. Because we have to desist from learning to do those mitzvahs, Shani Yachalas and Sayyidah Achaira. So we have to learn to support, we have to close the Gemara to support our families. Nobody else is going to support our families. We have to learn to help a wife. Nobody else is going to help the wife. We have to learn to pay attention to our children, they're our responsibility. But the default occupation of a person is learning. Now, if a person feels that they were uh, seriously derelict in this time that they spend learning Taira, so the uh, regular tshuva is to regret the loss of time and to commit to do better and to make fixed times for Torah study. That's the regular tshuva. But the tshuva shlema is for a person to concretize and crystallize in their mind what Rabbi Akiva told Papas. When he, Papas asked him, why did you learn Torah when you know the Romans said that it's a capital crime? It's suicidal. So he said, if they told the fish that he can't stay in the water, would he go out of the water? A Jew without Torah is like a fish out of water. What Rabbi Kiva was saying is, is that Torah is our life. It's our oxygen. Now, if a person worked on that, then they would make sure to spend more time learning Torah because it's our life, it's our oxygen. If a if the person would realize, it says, that Rishayim, Afilu Bechayeyem Kriya Mason, the wicked, even in their life, they're considered dead. Even in their life, they're considered dead. A life without Torah is a dead life. So it says, If you found me, you found life. Referring to the eight Chayim of Torah. If a person works on that, that's, that's a Tshuva Shlema. Here's a person. He goes into a CVS, a Walgreens, the local drugstore and there are different rows to get to the back where the pharmacist is and he can walk down different lanes to get to the back there's a pretty goita wearing very little clothing so he decides to walk in that row in back of her to look at her After all, a man is a human. It says, we, we, we tend to follow that. Now the Gemara says if you have two paths, and one of the paths is passes where the women are washing the clothing and they lift up their dress, to go in the water and you take that path where you could have gone the other path, you're rushing. So the Gemara says. So if you take that lane, that aisle in the store to get to the back, to follow the woman, that's a rishis. That's a wickedness. So regular tshuva is a person says, you know, I'm going to be stronger and I'm going to walk on, work on my shmira zenayim. That's regular tshuva. A tshuva shlema is for a person to think deeper. And to say that Hashem grants me pleasure in life. 
if I'm going to take my pleasure in illicit way, then Hashem will take away pleasure for me that I otherwise would get in a permissible way. Perhaps from a wife. Or perhaps a different pleasure. A person realizes that trade-off that helps a person much easier to do tshuva. Now we could go on on this for the whole shir. But I want to speak to you about other concepts. But remember there's a two-step process. The first is the basic tshuva. That's the charot over regretting what was in the past. The aziva sachet, the forsaking the sin. The kabbalah ala osid, the acceptance not to do it in the future. Vidui, verbal confession. And then there's the forensic activity. The yazai rosha darkai. To get to the root, what causes a person to sin? It says in the Pasuk, To love Hashem your God, To listen to His voice, And to cleave to Him, For it is your life. The Mephoshim talk about the sequel of this Pasuk, Ki Hu Chayecha. And they say, the Sifurnai says, that it's going on Uledovkabai, to cleave to him. Because somebody who lives, like we said earlier, with Hashem, and he's mindful of Hashem, you know, the Ramban says, that it's a fulfillment of Es Hashem Alikecha Tira. Every time we avoid from doing something because Hashem wouldn't be pleased with it. Any time you avoid doing something because Hashem, for example, you are hot on the collar and you were thinking of yelling at your wife. But you said Hashem will be very unhappy with me. That is a fulfillment of Es Hashem Alekecha Tira. The mitzvah say of being fearful of Hashem. A person that lives and is mindful of Hashem says the Sifurna, that's a Ludov Gabay, that's to cleave to him, to have dvekis. Ki Chayecha, that ensures us that we will cleave to Hashem in the next world. We know that that's what the next world consists of. We will enjoy the myriad pleasures of basking in the splendor of the Shechina. A person that has the vacus in this world will enjoy eternity. That's the way the Sephirnoi learns. But one of the Rebbeim that I had the honor of knowing, who's the Rebbe in the Yeshiva of Staten Island, for over 50 years, for over a half a century, Rabbi Shein, in his wonderful Sefer on Chumash, he says another pshat. He says, you know why it says, after la'ava es Hashem alikecha, ki hu He says, we know that if a person does tshuva, meyira, he does tshuva because he's afraid. Then that's a standard for people at this time of the year, they know that it's the day of judgment, and they know that some people will break their legs next year because it was uh, written about them. They know some people will get sick, some people will be in accidents, some people will lose their jobs. So a person is afraid. So he betters his chances for a sweet year by doing tshuva. That's tshuva miyira, and that's very admirable, tshuva miyira, tshuva out of fear. The Gemara says that if you do tshuva miyira, tshuva out of fear, zedoinais nasa kishkogas, your willful sins will be uh, downgraded 
to mistakes. It's a big thing. Here you are willful, and it will be downgraded to a mistake. So that person who walked down the wrong uh, the aisle and was gawking at the woman, it will be downgraded to a mistake. That's a big thing. That's what it says, that on Yom Kippur night, when we daven by Kol Nidre, after Kol Nidre, we say, Ki, ki l'cha'la'am bishkaga. That for the whole people, it will be considered just an error. Because most people do tshuva meyir. But the Gemara then says that there's a higher level. And that level is tshuva me'ahava. Doing tshuva from love. The Gemara says tshuva me'ava zedoinois nasa kizuchuyos. The willful sins are upgraded to merits. That's, that's amazing. Here a person did a grub of sin and it's upgraded to a merit. And by the way, this is the answer for a very odd custom that we do in our davening. When we say vidui in our davening, we sing. Heavy no. Now, can you imagine? Somebody comes into a human court and the judge says, How do you plead? And the person gets up, Your Honor, I did it. The judge will think he's crazy. What are we singing Vidui for? And one of the major answers to this question is because we're doing tshuva out of Ava. And when we do tshuva from love, our sin actually becomes a merit. That's something to sing about. We can sing about our sins. This also, there's a famous Hasidic lore that when the great Rebbe went down to do Tashlech and he symbolically threw some bread into the water that represents his sin, when the Rebbe left, people went into the water and grabbed the bread. Because he said, the Rebbe's sins are schuyas. The Rebbe did tshuva me'ava. His sins are, are mitzvahs. They would go in and retrieve the bread. This also is the explanation of something very, very unusual. When Yishmo passed away, it says, Ve'ele shnei chaye Yishmo, these are the years of the life of Yishmael. Ma'ashtana u'shloishim shana v'sheva shana. hundred years, thirty years, seven years. So the Riva, who is one of the Rishayim on Chumash, he says, Rashi says when it says ve'ele shnei chaye Sarah, and it doesn't just say that Sarah lived, it says shnei chaye, it's coming to tell you that kulen shavin l'tayim. All the years of sorrow were equally righteous. The question that the Riva says, it also says, Now we know Yishmo did tshuva. He died a righteous man. But can you say kulen shavin l'tayim? All the years of Yishmo were good? It says that Yishmo was a mitzachek. That Sarah had Avram throw him out of the house because he was Metzachek. And Rashi says Metzachek means that he was Ovid Avid Zorah. He did Gila Arias and Shvichas Domim. He committed, he was guilty of murder, idolatry, and immorality. How can you say Kulun Shavan Lataiva? It's a big kasha. And the Riva answers that Yishmol did Shuva out of love. 
And when you do tshuva out of love, you convert your sins to mitzvahs. To the point where we could say about Yishmael that all his years were good. By the way, this is very, very big for people that live with guilt. The people that live and they're, um, they're weighed down from the guilt of their past behavior. Many people have this. By doing tshuva me'ava, we could erase that guilt. We could rewrite history like Yishmael did. It's a remarkable thing. So now the question is, what does tshuva me'ava mean? What does it mean to do tshuva out of love? I believe the simple explanation of tshuva me'ava is when a person generates you have to work on this. We have to work on this. When a person generates love for Hashem, love for Hashem means Hashem, first of all, you made me a Jew. That's incredible. I have an automatic chalik in Eilam Abba. I have a passport. It's marked with Jew, Yehudi. I have a passport to Eilam Abba. That in itself Hashem, you gave me so many things. A body that works. Eyes that see, ears that hear. A body that digests. A body that enjoys food. A body that enjoys sleep. Teeth to chew the food. You gave me so much, such delicious food. You gave me a brain. You gave me Tyra. When a person thinks about how much Hashem does and generates a love for Hashem, I love Hashem. When you love somebody a lot, you don't want to hurt them. You don't want to do bad. You love them. And if that causes a person to do tshuva, that's tshuva meyav. That's one explanation of tshuva meyav. Here's another explanation of tshuva meyav. When we love Hashem, we want to get close to Him. Sin separates us from Hashem. It's a Mesech HaMavdil. It's a, it's a, a s iron curtain. When a person has sin, it's, it's a Lichloch. It's dirty. And we can't be near the Shechina. We can't achieve that. So I, I want to do Tshuva in order that I should be able to close to Hashem. Like it says, Doiver Shkarim Lo Yikai Neged Einoi person that's a liar won't be able to be before Hashem's eyes. Right? It says that Elokeinu shall, Elokeinu shall elu zima. Hashem hates promiscuity. So when a person, he loves Hashem, he wants to remove the filth that he should be close to Hashem. That's Shuba Meyav. There's another I believe, idea of tshuva me'av. We said, You should love Hashem your God. So the Gemara says, How do you love Hashem? You can't kiss Hashem. How do you love Hashem? So the Gemara says, That the name of heaven should be loved through you. And that's a big thing. That the name of Hashem should be loved through you. That's how you show love to Hashem. See, here's a person that his behavior does not 
present itself with a fragrance to people. If a person is not doing business with integrity, a person doesn't give a whiff of that person, people should say, that's, that's a man of God. Oh, a man of God, the Jewish God, that's a big thing. When a person repairs their behavior, they're not caught screaming, they're not caught lying, they're not driving in a way that people say, Ugh. So that's a person that's doing tshuva miyava. It's getting late and I want to speak to you about one more major idea. Again, next week since Rosh Hashanah is a, 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 a Wednesday night, Thursday night, there won't be a shir next week. So the next shir will be during our service of Tshuva. If you would like to sponsor that shir, 718. 916-3100. This aforementioned Pasuk, we say Lidovkabai, to cleave to him. So the Gemara asks, how could you cleave to Hashem? Halayhu eish oichla, he's a consuming fire. So the Gemara says, it means to be like him. Mahu rachem, afata rachem. He's merciful, you should be merciful. He's gracious, you should be gracious. And we know in Chaim Shmulevitz, he wrote in his essays, in his Sichas Musr, he said steps that a person should take to give them a better chance for Yom Adin. Reb Chaim writes, it says in the Gemara, Kol HaMerachim Al HaBriyos Merachim Min Olav Min HaShemayim Whoever has mercy on Hashem's creatures, Hashem will have mercy on him. So being merciful and being compassionate, says Reb Chaim Shmulev, is a tremendous preparation for the Day of Judgment. I'm going to tell you a story now and fasten your seatbelts. Every generation has its challenge. That's why it says Dor Dor Vidor Shav Dor Dor Every generation has its Darshanim. Because they have to know what are the challenges of the time. A right? uh, hundred years ago a speaker didn't have to talk about the dangers of the internet. And it wasn't, every generation has its challenges. Every generation has its pitfalls. Every generation has its crises. Crises. One of the challenges of our of our day and age is the children that are off the derech. They call them kip. Kids in pain. Children that suffer trauma. Children at risk. There's even a, a alphabet for it, just like FFB is from from birth and BT is Balchuva. They already have now OTD, off the derech. How do we look at these children? Sporting tattoos, rings in their tongues, in their nose, dressed wildly different than the modesty of a Jew, eating at McDonald's, driving on Shabbos. Listen to this story. It made a very big impression on me. The great Rav Elia Lapian, Zechatzak Levrach, Eschusi Yagan Aleinu, he was, had to be in a neighborhood, the 
that was completely chiloni, what we call not dati, not religious. And the Yoshev Rosh, the head of the community, was a completely secular Jew. Without any religious trappings whatsoever. But Rav Eliel Apian saw that he had very great for respect for Talmud Chacham and for Torah. It was very odd. It was an anomaly. And Rav Lapian asked him about it. And the man said, let me tell you a story from my youth. He said, in my youth I went to Raden to gain entry into the yeshiva of the Chavetz Chaim. I was smart, and I got the Bechina, and I aced the Bechina. I aced the test. But the Bechin was talking to me, and then he introduced me to the Chavetz Chaim, and he told the Chavetz Chaim he did very well on the Gemara, but he speaks heretical ideas, apikursus ideas. So Chavetz Chaim talked to him and told him, we have no room for you in our yeshiva with ideas of heresy. So the young man said, okay, I guess it's not the place for me, but I missed the last train. Could I sleep here tonight? I'll go back tomorrow. So the Chavetz Chaim told him, with these ideas, you can't set, you cannot put the sole of your feet in my yeshiva. You cannot step into my yeshiva. So he said again, where am I to sleep? So the Chavetz Chaim says, I have an attic room in my house. I'll set you a bed and you could sleep in my house. Fast forward to midnight. Everybody's asleep in the house. The Chavetz Chaim gingerly opens the door in the attic. He wants to check if it's too cold. And he checks and he feels it's too cold. He took off his coat. The young man was awake and he was seeing this happen. He took off its co his own coat. The Chavetz Chaim was then very old. And he put it around the young man and tucked him in to completely cover him and left the room. He said, this act of the Chavetz Chaim who called him an Apikaris and wouldn't allow him to step in the yeshiva. But on the other hand, made sure that he was warm and tucked in for the night with his own coat. This act warned him for the rest of his life to Torah and Talmud Chacham. Now before we get to the, another lesson from this story, we see that while it says that we have to be harakek mishak and ra, we have to distance ourselves from a bad neighbor. While we know that Sari Menu kicked out Yishmol from the home because of his influence, possible influence of Yitzhak, she kicked out her own child. But on the other hand, the person, the person that you have to have Rahmanis for, you have to care for. It's a very, very, very amazing tightrope. You know, that the din is that if somebody says, kill this Jew, or I'll kill you, you have to let yourself get killed. Rahman al-Islam Because who says your blood is better, maybe his blood is better. And that's even if you're Rosh Hashiva and the person is a drunk. Because we don't know how to measure these things. Do you know that in the 30s and the 40s, penicillin, antibiotics, when did they make penicillin? Huh? Yeah. 
and penicillin was very rare, and it was very needed. Ramea Shapiro essentially passed away very young, the author of the Daf Yemen, from, from tonsillitis or a strep throat because they didn't have yet antibiotics. There was a time that there wasn't enough antibiotic. And Ramesh as a tshuva, a doctor, a from a doctor, asked him, if I have a mother of seven children, can I give her my penicillin out of line? And Ramesh says, no, you can't play God. You have got to give the penicillin in the order of those that came to, to get it. You can't do that. Ramesh Paskin's the same way with organ donations. Can't say that, the, well, this man, he's very needed. He's a big community asking. This man's a, a vagabond. You can't say that. It's interesting how the Torah looks. Remember when, when there were Apikursim that were distressing Rameyer and he wanted to pray that they should be removed. And his wife, Bruria, told him, it says in the Pasuk, Yitamu chatoim, let the sin cease. But them, not the sinners. This is a this is an important attitude we have to understand when dealing with children at risk. We have to have Rahmanas. But there's another thing I see I'm over an hour already, but I have to finish the thought. There's another thing. The Chavetz Chaim wrapped this young man in his coat and warmed him. He didn't just warm him that night. He warmed him for the rest of his life. The rest of his life when he was the Yaish of Reish, the head of of the not religious municipality, he still had warm feelings for G'dayla Yisrael, for Tyre. <coughs> Chavetz Chaim's act warmed him for the rest of his life. I think I told you that one of Rav Moshe Feinstein, my Rebbe, Zechatzar, Kosh, Brachos, Chusi, Yogan, Aleinu, one of the things that they say about when he raised his children is he used to put their clothing on the steam. Remember, we used to have the old steams. He used to put their clothing on the steam. So in the morning, when they got dressed, they got dressed with hot clothing. They remembered that warmth of their father their whole life. I told you, when they asked for a palm, how do you succeed in the chinuch? He said, today it's chamimus, chamimus, and more chamimus. Warmth, warmth, and more warmth. And children remember, young parents, listen to this. Children remember warm acts, tender acts of their parents their entire life. And they give it to their children. And this is important so much in marriage. When a husband says something warm and endearing to his wife, that stokes her natural feelings of a lecha tishu kasai. To you she has a desire. That's the normal way of a woman. And it's stoked when a husband says something warm. A wife that says something warm to her husband before he leaves the house. You know, I'll be looking forward to seeing you later. A wife that says, it's nice to be married to you. That warm feeling stays with the husband throughout the day. Sometimes throughout the week. He thinks about it before he goes to sleep. He thinks about it when he gets up. The long range power of warmth 
is amazing. As this is the last shear of the year, I want to take the opportunity to wish all my viewers and all my listeners a year of good health, no scares, a year of happiness and sweet shalom bayis, a year of parnasa berevach b'chavit, a year of atzlach and ruchnius and gashmius, a ksiva v'chasima tayva masuka, and may we zayich it together to the biaskel tzedek v'mherev yamein. Oh.